hey you there just wanted to let you know you are now listening to the ak mindset Mindset podcast Podcast. yo what's good guys welcome back to the final episode of the ak watch of the spring season uh 2023 Uh, following oshino co can't believe we made it through um it's been a great season uh daniel with me as always what's good greetings and salutations people we did it we made it to the end of the season and we were rewarded our consistency was rewarded with season two announcement yeah Oshinoko season two coming to screen soon but first business as always episode 11 the last episode of the season um we're here to discuss it as always and yeah let's go and get right into it 100 percent. really excited for this one and uh, like you said jumping into episode 11 idols and it's kind of cool to see um following last episode how their relative fame that they already have in their areas of expertise acting youtube and ruby just being ruby <laughs> and having that you know natural attraction uh people are already considering you know making an effort to watch them making like their, their presence has already been felt and especially their connection with Bikomochi, the original group we see that a lot of people still have that name in their hearts um but i kind of wanted to ask firstly um what did you think of the the fit the the the, the garments they were wearing was 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 the fit was it was it given was it really given yeah man i thought it was i thought they all looked good man i thought i liked i liked how they were all synced with the red um and then you know mem she kind of had the shorts and ruby and um kana had the dresses on but it was it was good man they looked good you know i thought they kind of had the they had the look for the idols and they stood out like the like people were saying like all three of them could be stars of their own idol groups so you know they matched the star energy with fashion and the people loved it and i think i think they they delivered and memcho i have to say i did not respect her pull but she got <laughs> pull man she told she told the people she told the people them hey yeah i'm gonna be performing and they turned out so you know what i put my hands up and i say Fair enough, man. I respect it, even though you're lying to your viewers. <laughs> yeah, we can confirm that those are not fake fake followers on all their accounts. Mm-hmm. Those are not bots. Those are active participants, what? active fans who are who are ready to celebrate her. I, I was kind of confused because obviously last episode uh, we we talk we talked about their lack of ability to sing or some of the uh, members of the band, but um Yeah. But yeah. what was happening? <laughs> Bro, the vocals. It was, it was. Sick. I was asking the same question because I was like, "Were well, they not pants?" But I'm, I'm listening to them and they're singing perfectly fine. So um, I guess they worked that out. But um, I guess it's just an anime thing, you know. They, of course, for the performance, it had to sound good because if it sounded pants, um, it wouldn't be fun to listen to. But I say that, but there was literally a show I watched. I think last year where. You, you could ask when they were performing badly so i don't know what was going on there i guess they just managed to practice and that's the fruits of their practice that's how they were able to perform but oof, that performance was something else i can't lie what did you what was your what was your highlights of that just the whole that performance scene because i thought it was very very it obviously exceeded the manga by immensely i have to say yeah i definitely i was taken back in it because I didn't expect them to be this good initially. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy to see them just grow into the performance. Like, just yeah. as the, the crowd got more into it, as the music um, ruled on, as they got into like the main um, bit of the performance, um, I, you could see how much they enjoyed it. Like, it's, it's been a long time. We haven't really seen them all together having so much fun. Usually, especially when they're practicing, one person is having fun somebody else is having a crisis somebody else is thinking about something else but it was just cool to see them all focused on one dream which 
now they can see is can be a reality it can be something that they mm. can attain and obviously when you when you get that upfront like assurance or like that visual assurance that people like you and uh, yeah you know people vibe with you that's that provides you a different confidence and you, you can see that uh and yeah i'm just happy to see some of the the group members grow kana even though she at first i just don't know how she has all this conversation in her head so articulately as she performing <laughs> uh, a mad dance routine and singing center stage bro her talent knows no bounds that's crazy yeah yeah just some some bits on the performance i thought the songs the songs surprised me because i was like wow these, these songs are pretty good i mean we saw the um we heard the my sign is b before mm. and i actually wanted to rewatch i scene just to see how they compare but um the first song they performed um star star train yeah i like that i like that song it was good man it was it was kind of had me um two step in i was like yeah this is a good song and um, the dancing, the camera angles, wow, mm. the sweeping camera angles. I loved all of that. They were so cool. And then um, I loved that moment with Ruby. I have to say, like, Khan is supposed to be the centre, but Ruby, Ruby, that's really, that's my centre because I'm just like, the flashback, not, not even the flashback, it was just the monologue. I'm like, bro, like, I understand, you know, I've been supporting you with the, the self-esteem thing, but like, bro, it's not the time, bro. Talking about um the the people can't are not showing your color and i'm just like bro like please it's not the time and she's even frowning on the stage so and ruby's just like bro tomorrow and i'm like yeah you see that because i love i love that moment because you have a guy in the crowd he's just like bro these guys are trash man you see they thought they could just ride on the name and then ruby just comes on the stage and he, you see that eye energy and he's just like whoa I'm waving my arms and I can't even control them. I've got red <laughs> sticks in my hands. <laughs> the guys were just like, boss, what are you doing, bro? I'm like, you're a grown man. Why are you waving your arms like that? But he's like, yeah, man. Ruby's got, you see, that's the star potential, yeah? You see that in that moment, the star potential. She showed it there. And I'm really looking forward to see how she's going to grow from here. Yeah, man, she has mad charm. Like, she, that is the X factor of the group. That is, you know, where like you can tell they their potential lies is ruby her ability her enthusiasm and it seems so like real you know what i mean it seems so authentic i think that's the word i'm looking for uh mm. where her performance captivates you and you you're you're drawn into her love of being an idol and then now you as a become a fan and now you want to support somebody to continue to you know reach that dream continue to uh feel that joy so that you can also experience it through them and it's weird it, this i think this for seeing this kind of made me understand the whole kind of idol concept um culture to an extent when you have such familiarity with a group or a person and a connection with their love and their joy and it's like a mutual understanding that everything i am and can be is only because all of you support it but also you're also the only reason why we have something to support so it's i understand now the dynamic i understand why these people go crazy all the time and like you said boss man he changed his mind real quick real yep. quick the switch up nasty switch up <laughs> hey I'm not gonna lie, he needs to feel bad after that switch up. You can't you can't talk like that and then suddenly like waving so enthusiastically. It's actually crazy. Mm. Who else was waving though? Aqua, like a madman. Starboy. That guy is <laughs> he's funny, man. I respect it, you know. That's a guy with no shame. I can't lie to you. It was a bit out of pocket though. It was a bit out of pocket, like like your people them are performing and you're going to do something so outlandish that you nearly distract them out of their performance. Bro, did you see the composure they were losing? <laughs> I can't lie, because he, he, he was doing it with a straight face as well. Like, come on, at least smile. Like, you do all that waving and then you, you've got a straight face. Of course, you're going to be laughing. I would have laughed too. I can't lie, because it, it, looked, it looked mad funny. Look, but um, I funny. guess it's mad funny. 
because because i guess it you know it was kind of even a bit harsh because you have this scene before with connor like oh yeah i just need someone to say they want me man i just mm-hmm. need I just need somebody to say that they need to see me on the stage. They want to be me, my fan. And you just got the the white stick in the air. And then that kind of just, um, I guess it shocks her out of the funk. And then she kind of starts taking the performance into her stride. And I was good because I was just like, bruv, I was just like, stop dwelling in the dumps. Just enjoy yourself in this moment. You know, stop overthinking things. And she finally decided to enjoy the performance which was very good yeah you could see the immediate change like even the audience um notices straight away that like, oh look she she seems to be more involved in it and like that's obviously a trait that we've seen with Kana, and it's been understandable but there's a point when like it's a lot like it's a lot especially in these big moments where like there's no real necessity for you in this moment to see the worst out of everything you know like just appreciate being part of the group like maybe mm. there's less red um white was it um lights up for you but in like the big scheme of things that doesn't matter as long as everybody is singing along to your songs and having a good time and you're enjoying yourself hey, you can, we can build from that we can build from that uh like and obviously the interaction with uh aqua continues to be interesting uh because obviously after mm. the performance in, in the car wait wait we need to do disclaimer as well because uh <laughs> if you're a kana fan um also we like we like kana right we, no we, we, like do, kana. we do like kana we do but we she has to hold hold corn today she i'm does. sorry <laughs> she, she actually she does has to, before before we start what do you think about because now we've got the whole season what do you think about this romance between Kana and Aqua like what's your opinion on it now okay so I even bring I'll just bring the depth of this I've I've always enjoyed aspects of Kana and this is all we're going to build a picture so I can get my that understand my opinion and even in the manga I enjoy Kana but there were some things there's some things that makes me not want this relationship to work. You know what I mean? Like, and the, the worst thing is, I want good things for her. I've seen her trauma. I've seen how much pain it. Like, I, it, it, I actually hate when I see. I'm very empathetic when I see someone in pain like that. I don't want them to be in pain. I want you to be happy, but I don't want you to be happy in this relationship. I can't like you. It's, I can't. I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't like you. I can't have this. I can't have this only because your whole dynamic is a painful to watch and is very jarring sometimes because like she's it's the extremes she's so mature but so hey. childish oh my day like but it's oh. it, it's in the flip of a coin it's it, it doesn't make sense it's impossible for me to understand i'm like bro like there's why is she always in the extremes that like one time you're you're super sad about something then as soon as it changes into your favor and you're happy you're high and mighty and now you're looking down at people oh. and now you're judging people and you're saying blah 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 oh so you hey so so oh that's how you feel oh my the sarcasm just comes on at a different level and i'm there like bro do you oh. want people to want good want good things for you <laughs> it's, like it, you want people to <laughs> Because I will actively plot against you and your relationship. I don't know how, because my guy is far away in Japan writing this story, and the story's already been written. But I will find a way to destroy this relationship if I have to. <laughs> I'm tired. You know, <laughs> what about you, G? I feel you. You see, you know, it's funny how when you read something here, and then when you've, you, you watch it in motion, how your opinion can change. Because... Like I said, I like Kana. And, you know, I always thought, okay, yeah, her and Aqua have a interesting dynamic. It's it's nice to watch, nice to read. But, you know, I don't know. After this episode, I feel like there was just something that switched in me. And I was just I was just so hmm. I was just so disgusted the way I seen her change up 
as soon as man said it was a work relationship how can those two words just change your mood you were depressed because man is seeing somebody and then you just switch up so quickly it was hor- it was horrific i can't even lie to you i was just i was just really ashamed and i was just like yeah this is not how you do a romantic um relationship it's not how you build up the dynamics between two characters to show attraction and um it, it stinks um quite frankly i'm not here for it i'm not trying to see them two get together um they're cool as friends um and this might be something we see in the second season i always thought akane is tapped but now i think Khan is tapped too so i mean they're both crazy because yeah man she she has no shame she needs to learn how to find shame it was it was poor it was poor showing you know you know the scene when they're just in the um what's it they're just in the room and then she's just teasing man she's like oh yeah you just really want to talk to me i'm like bro like it's no you, you were literally um being a roadblock to the group's success because you would not listen to <laughs> man because you were depressed he got into a relationship please have some self-reflection i can't support you like this bro it's hard <laughs> hey how can somebody be so unaware and oblib- oblivious to this like how key do like you said she needs to find shame wherever she hid her shame she has to collect and i know there's a lot of interest that has accumulated on that shame because she's been rejecting it for a very long time but she needs to collect it and pay her dues because like you said that that scene when they were sitting down or he, she was teasing her i was like this is what i said i was in my heart i said aqua just turn it around you're a smart guy you're a grown man in a child's body turn it around you you must be aware what's going on be like something like okay but you were depressed because i wasn't showing you attention and then she will fold she will fold or even just say i know you like me and her she won't be yeah, able to how hide this man not talk, bro? Right. how does he not clock so obvious do you think he knows and he just doesn't care no i think he actually doesn't know like he he, he actually doesn't know and I, I don't understand how he doesn't know but he, uh, listen i don't know that this this romantic element is is worse it's, it's not it man. it's the not worse it's not it's not good it's i don't know because it's weird because i've read this moment and I, I don't know what happened maybe because i'm in a different um i'm just older when i read it it was like pandemic times it was a different time but when i seen this today i was just like bro this 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 switch up is not not good like this isn't this isn't the way this isn't the way um you you, you need to i don't know i don't know this isn't this isn't it man i don't know and she had a nice moment on the stage i'm gonna be your star like i like that energy yeah but nah not 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 what you were doing in the car just brightening up because you hear work relationship that's not how you do it um still like connor but that was a bad moment for me <laughs> yeah no i think that's that's why like some part of me always wanted like i like them as friends even though um arcane is tapped and has her flaws i just preferred that to this because at least it didn't have the the added um dysfunction of you know the ups and downs and i'm against you now i'm for you and stuff like that like it was just like i could understand the arcane um like root where he does she's not really he's not really interested in her but he's using her as a means to an end but through that process he realized he has developed uh you know and he's maybe he even denies him to himself but he's developed some type of feelings for her and then we see what happens you know i was yeah. that kind of route i know i would enjoy that dynamic because obviously first it pushes his agenda and his goal of trying to find his mom's murderer um and that through that you can see character growth because maybe there'll be an opportunity where he has to either choose um finding his mom's mur- murderer or the pursuit of arcane fully you know and he has guilt of using her and he has to come out and say do you know the truth see that kind of aspect i'll be like cool uh, i don't know how they're going to save this uh kind of relationship thing because i feel like this is going to be end game because you see how um 
even Ruby always makes those comments saying, ah, oh, yeah. yeah, but when he's yeah. with her, that's when he's most himself. That's when I know, like, I've seen it before. Like, I'm, I'm a vet. When I hear lines like that, I, <laughs> I know where you're going. But yeah, when I hear lines like that, you know what I mean. But speaking of Akane, um, how do you feel about them working together again? Do you think, I do you think the plotline that I've kind of discussed will be? Do you think it'll be a love triangle? But even this love triangle thing, I don't know how it's gonna work because. Sure, how man stop 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 framing the question like that we've already <laughs> read it oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, but see do you think listen bro what what do i think about a card day um, what do you think about a card day? Uh, I, I mean in terms of this next arc i think obviously it's quite exciting that they're gonna be working again on a stage play and the reason why i say it's exciting is more because that's her element right we seen how she changed when she was acting a role as in um aqua's mom i how she kind of excelled and she really was able to embody that character so to see how um Kana, i mean Kane is in the stage play in her natural environment to see her full ability is going to be very exciting to see and especially because they're incorporating um, a lot of some of the older characters like we've seen the guy on the suite today practicing so he's going to be in the play and then obviously Kana and we see that there's a bit of tension between the two which is I like how they're setting up the whole former child actor genius versus the mm. current genius and we're going to really see we're going to get a really good acting battle and it kind of brings me back to act age days when we used to get those moments before um, Redacted did Redacted things but um, this, this is going to this arc, next arc, it's gonna be, it's, it should be good because I think there's a lot of um, int- um, good moments and insightful moments where related to the industry and just um, when it comes to um, acting out a character and performing a production, which is an adaptation. So this next arc is gonna be good in my opinion. But what do you, what do you think about this upcoming plotline that they teased towards the end of the episode? No, likewise, I think like. They're bringing all the elements you need for uh, eventful episodes each and every week. Like having obviously previous cast members that we met and the dynamic between obviously Akane and Kana. Uh, but you see the real the real competition they have against mm, each other. I don't know yeah. if I don't know if they I understand think. how deeply it's rooted. Like they're fighting on all grounds, all not even just. Perf- professional ground the personal grounds like <laughs> <laughs> so so man's interested to see how that um kind of develops i know like you said it's smart of them how they casted it so that that kind of um you, it just shows you that these people know what they're doing especially at the top level because putting that they understand the competition between these two and they understand um how that's gonna now seep into the characters they're playing and what performance that's now gonna produce for the audience, something that's really real and vibrant. And obviously with their managing their age group, you just have to know how to get the best out of them, you know, cause they're not actually at their, their pinnacle in regards to acting ability. Obviously they're quality um, actors, top of their field in the age group. Obviously they're not where they will be one day so just being able, so aware of um, the current relationships between all these groups and the dynamics just to put yourself in a better position to get the best out of um, them in the show is is crazy to me. Um, so yeah, season, the next season I know, hopefully you don't have to wait too long. And I know that every time I talk, I talk like I haven't read the series, but I, it's our habit. <laughs> I'm excited. I mean, it's probably been a while since you read some of these chapters, so yeah, yeah, that's that's the truth as well. Right? Yeah. No, for sure. Um, we definitely have to talk about uh, Akane last. Last Akane kind of uh, before we retire the the beef that we have with her. Uh, Loki stalker, isn't it? <laughs> wait, whoa, 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 wait. She's Loki, a, oh, she's a Loki oh, stalker. Kana. Yeah, Kana, 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 Kana. Oh yeah, 
the way she just popped up is like oh yeah you know you shouldn't be taking pictures outside and then posting them straight away that's how stalkers i, I mean like you what you just did oh like, that chill. time i was like this i was like yeah we can tell because you know live in the flesh <laughs> looky <laughs> looky here yeah. present i said but well, i didn't even if she didn't even post it like two seconds so i know she followed them she it wasn't that insta team it was a real life i followed you in real life team because she they just posted it fresh postage yeah. and she, she said trying to show them the reality of the situation but, <laughs> um you know i don't know Kana, she's a funny individual and so what did, what did you think about that little beef that they have you know when they were just because Akane seemed like such a calm individual mm. but she did like personality did like a 180 as soon as she was in the presence of Kana so I think you know Kana's problematic the way she can just draw people out like that she, <laughs> she's an instigator low key yeah Akane got real petty quick and that's the side of her we never see I always, do you, know, do you know how baffed I was? I was I'm like, is this, is this the same character? And like, the screen started to darken a bit. Her, like, her eyes were a bit menacing. Mm. And the whole mm. energy changed. And I was like, it was like they were the only two people in existence. And they were on crud. And they were doing those passive aggressive, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not being rude, but I'm being very rude. You know what I mean? They, but they were at each other's throats. It was it was dirty still. It's disgusting. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know how Aqua stayed. Aqua has has a problem. He has a real issue. He's too oblivious to stuff because he should have been even more awkward. Like what is going on? But he was there, normal face, normal confusion. It wasn't making mm. sense to me. But it's only Apple. natural in it that they have this kind of relationship. I I'm guessing just because of how competitive their industry is and obviously yep. they've been beefing each other from a young age like they've been aware of each other and i think it's mostly to do with comparison so i the beginning of their beef is not really organically them to just liking each other's personality and stuff innately but obviously you're going to hear um things like oh you didn't do this like akane oh Akana just did this. Oh, you won this award. Oh, you're the genius. I just heard there's a new genius. You know what I mean? So obviously, that kind of com- conversation that's been around both of them, following both of them through their years, is going to have an effect where, when they meet, what they see is competition. All they see is competition. Uh, what about you? What do you think? Mm, I think, like we said, like as actors, even Aqua noted it they're very competitive they don't like losing they want to be the best so and i think um especially because um what's it akane had struggles getting roles as younger because of kana and um she has that increased animosity towards her so you see that um that they're slowly building up that um i guess tension in their relationship the instability why she might be more opposed to Kana because she doesn't really it seems like she's not really a big fan of her um doing the idol activities and then Kana kind of jabbed back with the oh you're doing reality tv show and kind of um mentioned about how being in even though like the troop is well renowned it's not really good for making money so it kind of just shows that even though Akane is um respected in the stage acting it's not really something that's lucrative in terms of money so i think it's those things just highlighted a bit of um i don't know how to rephrase it maybe like imbalances or like bits where they're like they might seem to be doing well but in reality they're not doing as good as they might want to be and they they were just um really good at picking each other's weak points but i like i like that interaction um and then i guess one one last thing um that I would like to mention is just um, I did, did think like again I did enjoy the performance I thought Kana was good in the performance even though she was doing the monologue thing she was holding it down um, I liked how expressive their faces were the production was almost perfect I think they really knocked out the park and I'm very impressed with what they did this season it was a very enjoyable season 
and it really i think if this is someone's first opportunity to watch oshinoko this is the best route to do it in and um just applause to the staff at um studio doga koba the, the producers directors animators um sound designers uh vfx guys um, we all did a fantastic job no i concur they excellent job um in this episode and all the episode previously and i also want to add that all the music pieces that we've had constant even just the ost and stuff have been bangers have been absolutely bangers uh and just type of show that is is good that that aspect of it is hitting high uh i do as we come to like the close i do want to know um your thoughts overall on this episode and then the season all together okay okay so thoughts on this episode i mean we had fun we had fun so it was a great episode um some funny moments in there some moments that although although i've voiced um i guess this pleasure it's not really a thing where like i really disliked it was just like a thing where like hmm um if i'm seeing you in real life like i'm not really i'm not really with that behavior and i'm not i wouldn't really tolerate it either if i'm being honest but um i thought it was a great episode they did their job with the performance elevated it from the manga they did their they did their thing they really you could tell that they put effort into that and then the other aspects they did a good job of um slowly leading us into the next arc preparing us to see what we're gonna see in season two um some good um character resolutions you know the connor and aqua beef is over now they're starting to show the hints of a possible life triangle so we'll see what happens there um ruby's starting her journey with the idol thing so overall and then memcho's still doing her streaming as well but overall a really great episode to end the season i think it was fitting it, even though like it wasn't like a big bang i feel like the big bang was at the start and then we kind of just slowly was just transitioning and setting up for the next season so i think it was a good fitting episode to end the season and then overall like i've said they started off strong with the episode one best way to have done that prologue bit and then they've kind of just gone through each arc i think they've adapted it really well and um i don't think i have any real complaints really like they didn't really sk- they didn't skip much i'd say they only skipped one chapter and while you could complain it wasn't really a major omission so yeah they did they did a great job what i'd rate it out of 10 i'd probably give it an eight so yeah great season i uh, love that i love to hear your thoughts man um for me i would pretty much everything you said i'm gonna add, yeah i think this episode particularly i just enjoyed how it divisive it made me feel in, in my thoughts and in my experience watching it and mm. i laughed loads and obviously as you can tell guys we really enjoyed this conversation uh, and discussing all the aspects of it uh, so i guess it gave us a lot of interesting talking points this episode um obviously starting with just like joy uh, and appreciation for finally being able to see the idol group come together and perform and everything that has led from episode 1 to 11 is now, you know, being uh, fulfilled. So it's good to have that kind of closure in a way, uh, in that aspect. Overall, the season, um, I think, was very well done. Um, you can go through all the episodes that we've recorded so far. There's never been a moment where we've had any kind of hesitations in regards to the quality of um, each episode and the show in general and that continues to be the case and i hope that's the case following season two and i think is bigger and better things from oshinoko um definitely happy we chose to review this one uh very enjoyable a lot to talk about uh, and yeah man <clears throat> so bro spring season done mm crazy yes sir <laughs> crazy crazy anything you want to tell the people man um hmm. Hmm. well definitely watching somniacs after school that's the brilliant romance series honestly a joy to watch every monday um 
Love and Yamata at level 999. One of the shows every week. It was, was crazy. Like the episode would, and I'm like, bro, how is the episode finished? I'm like, I never felt this way about um, a romance series before. I was, um, I was really enjoying that. Those two shows, I have to shout them out. And then um, Spring Season was really good. Um, and lastly, Skip and Loafer, great series, Mitsumi, Elite MC, um, warm feelings all around, made the Tuesday evenings very nice. Those are some good shouts, I'm not going to ask you, some, some great choices. Um, we probably mentioned them many a times in any of the things that have come out over the last couple of weeks, but yeah, this spring season has been loaded, and many of the shows that Daniel I said, um, of course, Heaven Delusion, Marshall, Insomniac, um, <laughs> even Vinland Saga towards the end. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, really, <laughs> really enjoyed it. And obviously, we're going to keep this kind of format up. I think this has been a, a great performer on the channel. And, you know, we really appreciate the support. So we're going to comp- continue to do it, improve, and get better week to week. Um, so just have to thank you guys. And obviously, Daniel appreciate it's always lovely discussing anime with you my uh, pleasure my pleasure kagya to to beyond we will continue to do it in it yes sir forwards and onwards of course amen man uh, so guys that's it from us um as always follow us on our socials um insta uh twitter tiktok all on screen um, we're going to continue to, as we said, bring out content, expect more from us following um, this episode and on to the summer season we go. So we'll see you then. Yes, uh, catch you in a bit. Peace. Love you.